Okay, thank you, Hawk, very much. All right, as I was saying about our judgment, judgment has begun with us at the church, at the body that calls themselves Christ. You Jesus, Jesus Christ's body. I was praying today, and I was thinking, how much good is people really doing? How, what good is the church really doing if people are leaving the church? I mean. I know of, of churches that are losing their congregation, and by losing their congregation, then they're losing the building with no money coming in. Of course, they can't pay the debt because usually they're in debt. That's the reason why I go to the highways and byways. That's why I preach to them that are outcasts that churches won't even let come in and if you're not acquainted with a lot of these churches when people walk in and if they're dressed they're not dressed exactly the way they should be they'll shun them and I think that's the most harmless thing one human being can do an, to another one. How dare we look down on people that may not are able to drive a nicer car or have the nicer clothes on. A and when that person walks in usually to church, the first thing that they see is they don't have no money. So what are they doing here? Uh, they don't have no aspects in life to try to better the, themselves, so why are they here? I've, I've heard some similar comments throughout my life because I was raised in a church. I was raised in a church, so I know pretty well what's going on in the churches and they're getting worse. They're, they're beginning to become cold when it comes to the true word of God. It seems like if it don't fit right into their agenda they just kind of like throw it out. So judgment is beginning with the church and it has to begin with the church because we are supposed to be lights that shine forth to the dying world out there we are supposed to be the light and the salt of this earth but yet if we have a church building and we're having services and we cannot accept everyone in there's a problem there I have a um, motorcycle ministry, me and my husband does, and we go out on the road. And yes, we go to bike rallies, and sometimes they're, most of the time they're not Christian bike rallies. I, I, I don't see that they really need me at a Christian bike rally. It's the ones out there that call themselves the one but sinners and they live out there in sin they wear those patches on their back and belong to a motorcycle club why because they're looking for fellowship they're looking for someone to accept them for who they are and what they're about that's, that's what they're looking for. And the church don't accept them. 
the church turns away from them. I, I've been asked, me and my husband has been asked, because we'd stop in and we'd go into a church. And, of course, we'd have to park a motorcycle out there. But we'd walk in and thank you. And when we get in there, people would look at us funny and we've been asked to leave. I mean, literally, saying, saying, you know, no, you're not welcome here. You, you, you need different type of clothing on. Literally, had that said to me and my husband one time. Well, like I jokingly said to the pastor that said this, and I meant it, though, but. I tried to make it a joke. It would look kind of funny, wouldn't it, if I had a dress and high heels on riding down behind my husband on a motorcycle. Maybe a little bit improper to dress that way, ride a motorcycle to church just because you all get offended by the way we're dressed. And then I just turned around and walked off and we left. There is everything going on in churches nowadays that's not good. We, the ministers that are called by Him, need to step up and start loving people no matter how they dress no matter what they look like we need to minister to these people because they have souls and God loves them God loves them he loves them as much as he loves anybody that's got a three-piece suit on the fanciest dress that a woman can find to put on. He loves that person that wears holes in their jeans, that has don't have a decent, really good dress to wear, but gets on the vest that she has to go to church. They need to welcome them and bring them in and minister to them. I've seen so much hurt so much hurt by churches driving people away from the church because they smoke cigarettes. Now, I don't smoke cigarettes. I used to. I gave it up. It's harmful to my health. But I'm never going to condemn a person if he's smoking a cigarette and say, you know, you're your 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 soul is damned for hell, and you're going to hell. You know, I need to start praying for that person so they can quit smoking, for their lungs' sake, their health's sake. But if that person's gave their soul to him, if they've come into him, and gave their life to him, that cigarette is not going to cause them to go to hell. I'm sorry to tell people. A lot of people have prejudice against that. I'd rather to bring them on in, say, leave your cigarettes out there, but come on in and let us minister to you because along the way, God will take that habit away from them. As they seek Him and they grow in Him and become more and more like Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, they will lay the things down that is not pleasing to God because he will work from the inside out. This journey isn't about us totally cleaning our own lives up because you know what? I could have never cleaned this mess up that was in my life. But when I come totally dedicated to him putting my heart and my strength and my soul into Him, then the things 
that were not good for me begin to come off. And was it hard to give up smoking? Yes, it was. But I would encourage anybody to, if they do, to quit. If they can, because of it's bad for your health, okay? It's just bad for your health. It's nasty habit, bad for your health. But a church shouldn't be there judging people just because they might smoke one. We're not judges. We are the light that shines forth to people out there to come in. The sick and the dying needs in the church. The sick and the dying needs to be ministered to and prayed to prayed for and held up but the churches are falling they're not doing that they're becoming self-conceited self-indoctrinating themselves and I'm going to go to James now the fourth chapter that explains a lot of things that will happen to churches that causes their breakups it says for whence comes wars and fighting among you come they not hence even of your lust and war in your members so when you see churches beginning to fight or you see certain occults arise and they will fight with you and call you names and stuff and belittle you they are warring battles and fighting within their own lust of their own self. And they try to bring it off on you. You know, it's easy to try to blame other people for our own faults. But nobody is responsible for the mistakes I have made in my life but me. You didn't do it to me. My mom and daddy didn't do it to me. I had to make choices consciously to whom I want to serve and who I follow. goes on down the second one. It says, Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and destroy to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet you have not because you ask not. Let me tell you this, and, and some of us knows about this occult that does this. They will come after you, and they will fight with you and war against you unless you bow down to their service and the way they believe and think. That's in many, many churches. They're, that's not only in occults like the ones that we know about but they're in churches too because there are churches that will do you this way their lust they kill each other when you pray death upon a person you're killing that person already So, let me try to explain this Messianic, I'm Jewish, okay? I believe in Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. And Messianic means a group of people that believe in Yeshua HaMashiach. They're the ones that have gave their life to the Messiah, the true Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. That's who I am. I am a Jewish woman that is trying to preach the true word 
of Jesus Christ, Yeshua. Trying to bring others, other Jewish people in. And not only them, but trying to bring in those that are lost out there and need, need him. And it's, and in this it says, <clears throat> ye, uh, ye ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. I think that is a very, very vital verse right there. People pray, pray for things to glorify their selves and not God. They want more for themselves than to go and have it to be manifest to be a glory for Yahweh, Yeshua, Hamashiach. And you know, the church, like, like the question, what about God's laws written by Moses? Okay, the church in a way has really deceived people. I, I was born Jewish, but no, uh, my parents didn't raise me in the customs of the Jewish ways. Um, in fact, for a long time my family tried to hide they were Jewish because of all the prosecution that they had to go through, but you know what, I don't care. You can call me names or anything. I'm Jewish. I am blessed to be Jewish. And I am blessed by him that he gave his light to me that I could see the true Messiah that truly come and died for us. That I can walk in his light and become one with him. That to me is the most awesomest thing that he did for me. The most awesomest thing. When he showed this Jewish woman that my Savior died on a cross around 2,000 years ago and he did it for me. He did it for you. Mm -hmm. he did and so I feel so blessed that he he chose to show me these things and I honor him as a Jewish woman that he would choose a young Jewish girl to have a child that would be called Jesus Christ Yeshua. Praise his holy name. He died for us all. He died for every one of us. And he com yes, and he completed that work when he said it is finished. It is finished. He wrapped those sins around him and took them down to the grave with him. And we are set free. We are set free. And you know, yes, there's evil people out there, but you know what? I used to be evil too. I was. I wasn't saved. I didn't know him. And yes, I was evil. But 
this evil person came into the light and the light shined into the darkness and that light set me free that light brought me out of the darkness and out of the evil things of this world and brought me out and put me in the light to shine a light for you to see by see you got to understand I didn't choose him he chose me you didn't choose him he chose you and he put that compassion that love that understanding down in your heart and he cultivated it and he wooed it and he loved it till you submitted and said yes I serve you I accept you I'm willing to come out of all of this evil and this stuff that I've been living in and you purify me from the inside out and bring me forth that I will be a glory for you upon this earth and every day of my life I pray Father let me help somebody else that was in sin and evil doings like I was and help me to reach out and bring them in to him for I am no better than they are they are no better than me God loves us I mean does people think that in John 3.16 that it was just a joke that he wrote God so loved the world God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever shall believe in him should not perish that goes for the most wickedest person that has ever walked this earth and the one I can think of there's two there's Judas and there's Hitler they died in a choice that they made but you know what Jesus would have saved them if they'd asked Jesus would have saved them if they would have asked but Hitler was so disturbed and so up in the occult and the evil stuff that went around him he never come truly acquainted with Jesus Christ Yeshua and he never asked or he never did say I love you of course if he had it then his whole life would have had to change and a lot of the things that he did during the Holocaust wouldn't have happened but they did happen and we are lights that has to stand out try to reach those people that are out there that could be just as evil as he was we have many that are in prison right now that really need our prayers and you know I love those ministries that goes into prisons and minister to these people I just wish more of them could be reached because the high percentage of uh, people coming out of prisons go right back into the stuff that they were in and that oh okay 
that sounds good. Um, um, wait a minute. Let me get my thoughts together. How do I do that? See. Okay, um, I'm trying to fix this where I know what I'm doing, which I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm like, okay, <laughs> um, let me get my glasses on because once I learn how to do this, I can always do that. Will that fix things? Okay. Thank you very much. You know, my life has not always been easy. And I know your life has not always been easy. There are many of us that have went through lots of things, lots of things in our life. And that's okay. That's okay. Red is not bad. Red is the blood of Yeshua, Hamashiach. <laughs> so, anyway, going on. Thank you, Romans. I don't think anyone really has had an, a really good, easy, easy, easy life. I mean, I don't care how much money you have in this in your bank account. I don't care how many fancy clothes you may have in your closet. I don't care how many new cars you may have. There are things deep down inside you that you know you're not happy about. You know that you're not content about. That things that money cannot buy. But when we come into Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, I'm not going to tell you the road is going to be perfect and there's nothing bad going to happen because you know what? We are flesh and blood. And there are evil powers and principalities that are out there that's going to try to strike us down. Try to keep us down because if they can strike us down, keep us down, then we won't be <clears throat> so inclined to be preaching the Word of God be telling people about Yeshua HaMashiach and the blood that he shed for us. The, Satan wants to defeat us to keep the word out. He, we are in a warfare with him. Right here in the church you can see there's war going on inside the church all the time. And when wars happen, when wars happen in churches and they begin to tear apart, one goes this way and one goes that way, you're not accomplishing anything because this group over here don't like this group over here. And you know what? Yeshua said that we have to love each other. We have to love each other. That is part of his commandment that he gave. And while it goes, somebody asked about the commandments of God. Well, this, I really want to address that because, okay, Moses went up on a mountain and who did he talk to? God. Who gave him the Ten Commandments? 
God? Who told him how they should live? 